If you're coming to Malaga and not quite sure what to do, in this video I'm going to give you some of the best ideas to help plan that trip. You gotta start your morning off with a cup of coffee, and in Malaga, there's no better place than Cafe Central. But be careful, if you've already figured out how to order your coffee in other Spanish cities, in Malaga, it's a completely different story. The owner here got tired of wasting coffee and created a completely different system on how to order. It's based off your coffee to milk ratio. And here, you've got a lot of different options. You can even see all the different levels on the cup. If you're here in Malaga, you've got to do something Picasso. Here in the city, you've got two different museums. You've got the Picasso Museum for a little bit of an overview of all of his different works. And then you've got the place where he was born, right behind me in the Plaza de Merced. Whether or not you go to either one of those museums, you got to come over here, sit next to the man himself, rub his head, and they say you get a little bit of his creativity. At least once you'll have to take a stroll on Marques de Larios Street, or simply put, Calle Larios. It's mostly built for shopping, but it's definitely worth it getting over here at least one time during your trip and taking a stroll with the locals or dar un paseo. And if you're fortunate enough to have your trip coincide with the Christmas season, you've got to come over and check out the light show. One of your stops definitely has to be over at the cathedral. It took over 200 years to get finished and technically never was. Because it's missing one of its towers, one of its arms, it's known as La Manquita, the one-armed one. Ask anyone around here where to go to get to the cathedral and they'll send you right here. But if you want to sound like a local, use that nickname, La Manquita. And if you do come over here, I would definitely recommend getting inside. It's a really impressive cathedral and one of my favorite in all of Spain. And one thing you definitely want to do is make sure you get the extra ticket to go up to the roofs and get some of the best views of the entire city. Malaga's signature dish is fried anchovies, known here as pescaito frito. You can find places all over the city, but for the most authentic experience, you're going to come over here to the Pedra Galejo neighborhood. You're right on the beach, you've got places and restaurants where they fry the fish just on the outside. One thing you want to keep in mind is that if you want to get in on time, make sure you have a reservation or you'll be waiting a long time in line. We're here to El Merlo, which has one of the largest terraces on the beach. Real quick guys, if you're enjoying this travel guide, I've created a Google list that you can follow and save to your phone for when you make it to Malaga. It includes all the places in this video and more, so check it out in the description below. And if you're looking for the most famous restaurant in all of Malaga, you gotta have at least one meal in El Pinti. It's enormous, all sorts of different rooms and a great atmosphere. and you'll want to visit the Alcazaba, an 11th century fortress built during the Muslim rule of the city. A little tip, get in here at 9 a.m. when it opens up and you'll have the place by yourself, just like I do right now. And right below the Alcazaba, you've got the Roman theater. While you can see it from the outside in the plaza, it's definitely worth getting on the inside where we are right now. And remember that every day it's got free entrance. Believe it or not, where we are right now used to be the Casa de Cultura and wasn't excavated until 1951 when they found it and wanted to show it off to the rest of the city. You've also got more parts of the Roman city hidden underneath. We're now at the Antigua Casa Guardia. This place is perfect. I go anywhere, this is the type of place that I'm looking for. You've got vermouth, you've got things to eat, all sorts of different barrels. This atmosphere is incredible. Words don't even describe it. What you gotta order while you're here is a pajarete, which is a very sweet wine. Really good.
Normally, for some of the best bars, you want to be right in the very center. But what I found is that in Malaga, you want to be just on the outside. Actually, right here on Carreteria, right where the old wall used to run through, we found three of the best bars that I've tried in the entire city. We've gone to Carreteria 111. We've gone to La Tranca, which took us three days and three different tries to get into. Spectacular. And then we're over here at El Colmado. Really great place. And it's got that kind of feel that we're always looking for. And right on the same street, if you're looking for the best craft beer bar in all of Malaga, you've got to hit up La Madriguera. Not only has it got a great selection of beers from all over, but it's also got an incredible kitchen. So come on over and try out some food as well. If you're looking for what are by far the best views in the entire city, you've got to make your way up to the Hibral Faro Castle. It's got 360 views to the sea, into the old part of the city, and it was built in the 14th century to protect that Alcazaba. So it's much higher up with views all throughout. The best way to get up here is on the 35 bus, and remember to get the joint ticket for both the Alcazaba and the castle for a little bit of a discount. They've also got a nice walkway connected up to the palace that gives you some incredible views down to the sea. So take the bus up and walk on down. With over 300 sunny days a year, there really isn't a bad time to visit Malaga. Almost 3,000 years of history have left the city packed with all sorts of cultural offerings, along with some delicious food to try during your time here. So if you are visiting Malaga, make sure to check out that list below, and remember to subscribe for more travel guides about different cities around Spain.